We're fortunate in Ontario. Our diverse forests span the length of the province, enriching our landscape and shaping the way we live, play, and plan our urban and rural communities. Likewise, humans shape that diversity too. Over the last 200 years, we have cleared vast swaths of Ontario forests for agriculture, housing, transportation, and urban expansion. This fragments the natural ecosystem, making it vulnerable to invasive species and triggering one of the most pressing biodiversity issues of our time. Invasive species are plants, animals, and microorganisms introduced by human action outside their natural past or present distribution, whose introduction or spread threatens the environment, the economy, or society, including human health. They are adaptable, reproduce quickly, thrive in disturbed systems, and outcompete native species for food and habitat with no natural predators. Learn more about a few invasive species currently threatening our forests and what you can do to control their spread and protect the Ontario landscape we love. Garlic mustard is an adaptable, aggressive, herbaceous plant native to Europe that has a two-year life cycle. The first year, garlic mustard grows as a basil rosette, where the leaves stay green throughout the winter. In early to late May of the second year, it grows one or more flowering stalks, reaching up to one meter in height before setting seed and dying. You can pull garlic mustard if you find it in small clumps along the sides of a trail, um, but you may have to go back for several years because there may be some seeds in the seed bank and the plant will keep growing up. But if you keep doing that diligently for a number of years, then um, it can be effective way of gradually eliminating the plant. Ontario has a garlic mustard best management practice guide that is available to the public and outlines the steps you can take to control garlic mustard on your property. Dog strangling vine is an invasive perennial plant native to Europe from the milkweed family. Introduced to Ontario in the 19th century, dog strangling vine has been spreading rapidly throughout southern Ontario, invading forests and dominating ground covers. They can grow up to two meters in height by twining onto trees and plants, strangling other plants as they grow. This dark and shiny leaved vine flowers in late June with small pink, red, brown, or maroon flowers, which also produce pods that split open to release fluffy white seeds similar to native milkweed. This site here has been uh, chemically controlled for about four years now, and um, it's uh, now being recolonized by plants that uh, weren't here before. It was basically just a carpet, a thick uh, tangle of dog strangling vine. It was growing up the trees and, and completely covering the forest floor. And, uh, and now we're seeing things returning to the site. We see oven birds returning to the site, hermit thrush returning to the site. Um, I can hear a morning warbler just off to the side. They're coming back because it's now becoming, again, suitable habitat. Ontario has a dog strangling vine best management practices guide that is available to the public and outlines the steps you can take to control dog strangling vine on your property. Emerald ash borer is a bark beetle native to Asia first discovered in North America in 2002 in Michigan and not long after in Ontario. The adult beetles feed off the ash foliage, causing little damage to the trees. However, their larvae feed on the inner bark of ash trees, shutting off the tree's natural flow of water and nutrients. Emerald ash borer is host specific to all ash trees in North America. Emerald ash borer is an ecological disaster as it spreads across Ontario and parts of Quebec. It is eliminating ash as a major component of our urban and rural forests and uh, we're losing the biodiversity of that species. It's on the scale of what we saw with Dutch elm disease um, many decades ago where elm became a lot less common on the landscape. This insect is even worse. The best way to look at it is like a very slow moving fire that as the front of the fire moves it, it uh, kills all the ash trees and at the same time you have spot fires jumping ahead of it and, and starting new fires. Also the quarantines that are in place to restrict the movement of ash can also restrict the access to those raw materials by uh, mills in uh, Ontario or Quebec and they also can restrict our ability to ship our products overseas where other countries may impose restrictions on Canada if we have things like invasive species like emerald ash borer that other countries don't want then they impose the same regulations on us so that we can't ship a material overseas or if we do ship it we have to take actions like kiln drying it or other things that increase the cost of the material so that we can ship it overseas. The vast majority of invasive species arrive and spread via man-made pathways like shipping, horticultural trade, recreation, agriculture, forestry, construction and travel and tourism. 
As one of the major ports for entry for invasive species in Canada, Ontario must remain vigilant in preventing their introduction in the first place and in managing and controlling them if they've already arrived. The best strategy you can adopt in protecting Ontario from the spread of invasive species is simple. Look before you leave. Mud is a major conduit for seeds of invasive species like garlic mustard and dog strangling vine. Don't let these seeds hitch a ride on your bikes, ATVs, boots or pets. Stay on the trail while hiking or biking to avoid spreading invasive species to new areas and wash away any mud before you move to a new location. Similarly to mud, mulch and soil can contribute to the spread of invasive species. Only purchase these items from reputable suppliers that publish the origin of their product. Be aware that invasive plant parts or seeds may be hitchhiking. Likewise, avoid dumping your yard waste in natural areas where invasive species can disturb native vegetation. When planning your garden, research plants and request non-invasive or native species to encourage natural biodiversity. The movement of wood is also a major contributor to the spread of invasive species. You can prevent it by buying your firewood locally, burning it on site, and never bringing it back home or to another location. One of the main vectors by which invasive species are spread around is through the movement of firewood. And often what can happen is before an insect or disease has even been detected, uh, people inadvertently are spreading it around in firewood. And sometimes it's because you can't see what's there or you don't recognize what's there. So a, it's a good practice to not move uh, firewood long distances. If you are going camping or taking it to your cottage or to your camp, then uh, buy it locally and burn it on site and don't leave firewood behind that could be infested uh, and spreading insects or diseases uh, in Ontario. Ontario's biodiversity is historically rich, vast and thriving. Our forests have defined our landscape and the way we plan our lives. Today though, invasive species are considered one of the greatest threats to this immense biodiversity, second only to habitat loss. To stem the tide of these invasive plants, animals and microorganisms, we need to understand and curb their man-made pathways into our province. The way you play, travel and manage your home can contribute to the protection of our province's natural habitats. Together, we can help keep Ontario looking beautiful.